The economics of coronavirus people are concerned about the economic impacts of the virus. How severe will the economic downturn be? Will the coronavirus cause a global recession worse than the 2008 crisis? I guess the answer to the first question is yes, and the answer to the second question would be we don't know. So I'm not looking for speculative answers, but references with a solid economic background. For example, I found these Flattening the Pandemic and Recession Curves, March 13, 2020, by Pierre Olivier Goering as Berkeley. Economics in the Time of COVID 19, by Vox CEPR. Any other academic references? Economics podcasts are also welcome. I found those. Russ Roberts and Tyler Cowan on COVID-19, The Side Effects of Social Distancing by Freak Economics, and a bunch of recent episodes by Planet Money. Update. I just received an email with nice references on following the economic impact of COVID-19 by Stanford SIEPR experts. With the right keywords and author searches from earlier papers, I actually found some academic output already. This might not be peer-reviewed yet, i.e. preprints. McKibben and Fernando, the 2nd of March 2020, The Global Macroeconomic Impacts of COVID-19, Seven Scenarios, examines the impacts of different scenarios on macroeconomic outcomes and financial markets in a global hybrid DSGE, CGE general equilibrium model. The scenarios in this paper demonstrate that even a contained outbreak could significantly impact the global economy in the short run. These results are very sensitive to the assumptions in the model, to the shocks we feed in and to the assumed macroeconomic policy responses in each country. And that's already cited by Wang et al. COVID-19's impact on China's economy based on data of spring festival travel rush. This paper starts with the analysis of the daily railway passenger volume data during the spring festival travel rush, and establishes three time series to model the railway passenger volume, GDP in the first quarter model, and GDP in the last three quarters respectively. The forecast results indicate that, a. Uh, affected by the epidemic, China's economy will lose 4.8 trillion yuan in the first quarter of 2020, which is an expected decrease of 20.69% and a year-on-year -year drop of 15.60%. b. China's expected GDP growth rate for the full year of 2020 will reduce from 6.50% to 1.72%. However, there are some positive factors not taken into account in these models, which means that the forecast results may be underestimated. With the global spread of the epidemic, the instability of the world economy will in turn impact China's economy. JP Morgan has put out some estimates already, although they don't detail their methodology as much as a peer-reviewed publication would have to. The U.S. economy is projected to contract by 14% in the second quarter, after experiencing a 4% contraction in the first quarter, before recovering to 8% and 4% growth in the third and fourth quarters. Euro-area GDP will suffer an even deeper contraction, with double-digit declines of 15% and 22% in the first and second quarters, before rebounding by 45% and 3.5% in the third and fourth quarters. There is no longer doubt that the longest global expansion on record will end this quarter. We now think that the COVID-19 shock will produce a global recession, as nearly all of the world contracts over the three months between February and April, said Bruce Kassman, chief economist at JP Morgan. Initially, the expectation was the novel recession may generate limited labor market damage, but JP Morgan Research is now forecasting the unemployment rate for developed markets as a whole will rise 1.6 percentage points in the next two quarters. The rise in unemployment will be sharper in the U.S. than in the euro area. Most immediately, U.S. initial jobless claims should spike above 400,000 in the coming weeks, said Michael Faroli, chief U.S. economist at JP Morgan. McKinsey has a somewhat spread out March 25th presentation, but a couple of slides with their scenarios, estimates I could fish from there. Enter image description here. Enter image description here. Likewise, PwC has a March white paper mostly focused on Australia. But which does come with a global map attached of their estimates of GDP losses, alas in absolute figures only, and I think over one year based on what they say on the previous slide. Enter image description here. Before the COVID-19 outbreak, there has been a niche academic domain of estimating economic impact pandemics already, typically using a CGE model. Results depend of course depend on the assumptions used. E.G. Smith, Keo Brown et al. had a series of papers approximately a decade ago. 
Quoting from a later one that covered more than one European country, results suggest GDP losses from the disease of approximately 0.5-2% but school closure and prophylactic absenteeism more than triples these effects. So they went as high approximately 10% GDP losses. While they did not envisage government-mandated lockdowns, they modeled prophylactic absenteeism in response to approximately 3% death rate media reports as the most severe case. An earlier paper of theirs, on UK only is open access in the BMJ. Quoting their assumption from there, almost everybody in the population will know someone who has died once the mortality rate reaches one death per 300 people, triggering prophylactic absenteeism. Another paper Vericchios et al., in a similar vein but attempts a global estimate GTA PCGE, and also discussed prior, related work, the two pandemic scenarios modeled give quantitatively and qualitatively different results. Opening square bracket dot 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 closing square bracket. Our results show that the peak GDP effects on the world economy of an influenza pandemic are in the range 0.06 to 1.01% in the peak year depending on the nature of the pandemic. Our results are smaller than the only previous estimates of the global economic effects of influenza pandemics by McKibben and Sidorenko 2006. They estimate reductions in global GDP of between 0.8 and 12.6% depending on the severity of the pandemic. Our results are not directly comparable to McKibben and Sidorenko as they did not model a continuum of pandemic scenarios across the virulence infectiousness continuum. Rather, they assume a given reproducibility of the virus infectiousness and vary virulence across their four scenarios. Further, they implicitly assume multiple waves for all their scenarios as they presume that new infections continue to occur for greater than one year. This is likely to characterize only more extreme pandemics such as the 1918-19 flu rather than milder pandemics. Differences in the range of influenza pandemics modeled by us and McKibben and Sidorenko are justifiable given the uncertain nature of future pandemics. Our results thus build upon the findings of McKibben and Sidorenko by extending the estimation of potential GDP estimates over a further range of potential pandemic threat scenarios. Opening square bracket dot 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 closing square bracket. Our results show that the global macroeconomic effects of an influenza pandemic may be significant but are also likely to be short-lived. The largest economic impacts of an influenza pandemic are driven by reduced international tourism, due to risk-modifying measures by households and travel restrictions imposed by health authorities, and lost workdays, due to illness or formal social distancing measures designed to contain the virus. This is consistent with the work of Keo Brown et al., 2009, 2010. 